and welcome to We Live in a Society. Today, I'll be talking about the cultural differences between France and Australia from the perspective of an Australian who's lived in France now for just over two years. And another food that I just, I just don't understand here in France is steak tartare. It's essentially mincemeat. It's like a delicacy here. Delicacy. But it's raw. Raw mincemeat. You, you order it and you just get this little patty of raw mince. And that's a delicacy and you pay 30 euros for it when you can get, you can get it for like a couple of euros at the, the supermarket. It's not cooked There's, and it's not marinated in anything. It's just the raw mince on a plate with a few sprigs of um, some sort of like condiment. That's it. And it's, I just, I don't understand that. Like, can the French please explain that to me? I, I do not understand the, the, the love of steak tartare here. It's, it's bizarre. It's, it's mincemeat. It's, yeah, I don't get it. Also, I don't know if this is just my particular circle of friends or, or whether it's just um, localised to the particular area in France I live in, whether it's nationwide or not, but people will take a plain yoghurt and add sugar to it and then eat it, rather than getting the option of the flavoured yoghurts that are right also there. They'll like select the plain yogurt and then add sugar. I just, I don't understand why they add the sugar when you can get the flavoured ones that are also there. Um, it just, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, so one thing I also don't understand, and I think, I don't know if it's just sort of traditional, well, I don't know if it's just culturally traditional in the area again of France I'm in, but if you go to the cobblestone streets of Old Vuillon and get a traditional meal, it's awful. All the courses are like awful. I don't understand the fascination here with like organ meat. So usually you'll have like an entree and it's usually like an, a poached egg in like Worcestershire sauce and bacon. That's really delicious. Or the uh, the salad they have here, which um, it, I mean, it's just essentially, um, it has like an egg and that lard on bacon and just uh, usually um, like a dressing with lettuce. That's pretty much it. Um, and then the main will be like tripe, breaded tripe, or um, black sausage, or black pudding, or some steak and kidney pie, like it's just, it's bizarre. The, they do have lots of local markets though, which is really good, um, everywhere. They have them every day in different parts of the city, um, like farmers markets, so you can actually go buy fresh fruits and vegetables that you're intended to consume within a day or two. Um, one big difference here in France I've noticed is that supermarkets don't sell like over-the-counter um, drugs or like first aid related items and I learnt this after walking the, the, the lanes of the supermarkets over and over and over again they don't sell that sort of stuff um, you have to go to pharmacies to, to buy all that um, which yeah fair enough it's just that I'm not in Australia you can buy all those sorts of things at the supermarkets and um, and there are so many pharmacies here there's like three or four in every block there's there's a lot of pharmacies um, the healthcare is really good here as well um, that's that's another great thing so, and so on that note, relating to, I guess, services provided, um, doctor's offices. Um, I had to see a doctor while I was here to, um, to get like a medical certificate to start a new job. And I just had to have like a basic physical. And, but they don't have doctor surgeries and, and clinics that are, you know, nice and clean and sterile places where, you know, you feel comfortable going. The doctors here are just in apartment buildings. And, you know, Leon, it's an old city. They're very old. And so I went to this doctor's and just went into his apartment. I literally had to walk through his lounge room to get into where his office was, which was just a bedroom in his house. And I just, I thought that was really, really bizarre. Um, I'd prefer to go to like some sort of clinic where there's like lots of different doctors all there together. Um, yeah, I did, I really struggled with, with just going to a doctor's, to a doctor's office in his apartment. It's just, it's bizarre. I'm just not used to it. So another, strange occurrence in France are uh, credit cards. They, they don't exist. Um, so I've got, I've got a French bank account and a French bank card, but it's not a credit card. You can't get credit cards here in France. You can get debit credit cards. So you can only use the money that's in your account minus 500. So you can withdraw five, um, you can like overdraw $500 and that's, I guess their credit cards, but that's it. So there's no such thing as credit and they have really restricted limits on how much money you can take out of your own bank account every month. When I first arrived here, yeah, I wasn't familiar with this with this kind of thing. I've never experienced it before. Um, 
and I had a $500 a month limit on my card. My rent was double that a month. And I made the mistake of getting out the cash to give to the landlord. Um, so I was living in kind of like a, uh, what's it called? Um, like, not like a bed and breakfast. Yeah, we just like privately rent from somebody. Um, I was renting a loft um, out of the city. But yeah, like I, and I went to, you know, buy food and then my, my card wouldn't work and I've had to go to the bank and miss my terrible French try and, you know, understand what was happening. But yeah, $500 limit, that, or 500 euro limit, that, you know, transferring money doesn't count, so I can transfer my rent now. Um, but you can't withdraw and, and things you pay for online count towards this limit. It's ridiculous. Like I had my mum over here for Christmas. I needed to, to oh, we went to Paris. We went, we went to lots of places. And by the time you pay for flights, accommodation, trains, food, $500 goes really quick. And yeah, it's just, it's bizarre. And I've managed to get it lifted a little bit. Like I think it's a thousand dollar limit now, but you, you still can't use more than that. So I don't know how you would purchase plane tickets or any, like if I wanted to buy a car here or yeah, it's just, it's, it's bizarre. It's really strange really strange. It's just incomprehensible as to how the society functions here. It's really, really bizarre. And also just relating to old buildings, elevators. Elevators in France are death traps. They're, they're old, they're rickety, and they're like a little coffin. So you, you step in them and the worst one I ever encountered here was at my friend Christina's apartment. You walk in and it, you could barely stand and I'm not a big person I, I could barely fit into this thing and you couldn't stand side by side and there'd be enough room for maybe you and then someone to stand directly in front of you and the whole thing just rattled up five flights no can't abide that I would rather walk up the five flights of stairs and to get in any, any elevator here and like I in my in my apartment building I'm on the fifth floor and so just constantly it's a big apartment building so there's lots of like people and they're all there's always someone doing renovations and what they'll do is they'll open the elevator door and block it with sandbags or something then they will proceed to place all their construction equipment <laughs> in bags of cement and, and wood and whatever else tiles in the elevator they will pack it up till it's way past the weight limit acceptable for the for the up and the downing um, and the elevator breaks I don't think the elevator has worked for, for more than five or six days the entire time I've lived here and I've lived here almost a year now but yeah, constantly people would just shovel their shit in there and not, not care. And that's another thing with like the French culture. They're the politest, rudest people I've ever met in my life. Like if you're standing in a line, I mean, there's no lines, forget that. They'll just walk in front of you and they won't care. And, and no one will say anything because they're so polite. But they're rude and they do that to start with. But And they, they're happy to do it, but there's no way they'd ever say, oh, hey, like, you know, Line back, like if, if I was in Australia, I'd be like, hey mate, stop cutting the line, line's back here, you know. Not in France, they will not say anything. They'll just let all these people push in, in front of them. And you know, I was in the supermarket, and here, it's really bizarre, because if you don't have the supermarket card, there's, you know, there's about ten lanes open. Six of them are for the, if you've got this supermarket card, which I didn't have, just had my credit card, my debit card. One line open for that, and the other ones were like ten items or less. So I'm in, I'm in this lane, and but it's also um, a priority lane. So if you're elderly or pregnant, um, you can go to the head of the line and go through. Fine. It would have been nice if they had have had a secondary, you know, lane open for non-supermarket cards for people just paying with their with their debit cards that wasn't a priority. So I'm I'm in line. I've got lots of frozen stuff. Half an hour or so, there were like four people ahead of me. In that time, an old man, you know, hobbled up and he went to the front of the line, fine. Then a heavily pregnant woman, again, fine, she came through. A mother with about three or four little kids, she came through, fine. Like, that's what the lane's for. Bit annoying they didn't have another one open, but okay. An hour goes past, I'm still waiting in line. All my frozen shit's melted. I'm starting to get really shitty. I'm finally at the, the you know, the conveyor belt. I'm lo loading all my stuff up and this woman comes. You know comes to the front with a 15 year old son and I'm and and I'm like excuse me no no you have to go to the back of the line I'm next and she then um, and she's just like I'm deaf and I'm like being deaf doesn't affect your ability to stand in line line and wait 
like everybody else. I'm like, no, I'm sorry, no. The whole, whole supermarket's just gone quiet. Everyone is just looking at us. And like she's, and she's starting to argue with like the cashier to insist that she should go to the front of the line. And I'm like, no, this is prioritized for people who with, with disabilities who can't stand for long periods of time and who need to go to the front. This woman is deaf. She can stand in line like everybody else and wait. And, and eventually the guys, the, the, the cashier guys, like, yes, like you can go to the back of the line. And at that point, everyone that was in proximity to my line started clapping me. So like, I, I don't know, like it just, because the French people just, they're rude and they think they can just do what they want and to hell with everybody else. And I wasn't going to let that happen. But again, the French are so polite that no one would have said ever said anything to her. So I don't know if I was wrong or right in that, but I just think she was really trying to exploit the system. And yeah, it's just, it really pissed me off.